We are gonna go spear fishing. We're getting water from rain. If we can just keep up our food supply, we'll probably live here forever. I'm just so happy right now, mm -hmm. today in particular. Other good news is they've lifted the ban on alcohol. I am so excited about this beer. Can I finish it? Put the beer down. Okay, death is decreasing quickly. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus, we've been adhering to a strict lockdown in Bocas del Toro, Panama. Recently, we've received permission to leave civilization behind and travel to more remote regions of the archipelago. Okay, breakfast is ready, bud. Oh, man. Oh, this that looks so good, bud. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> corned beef and hash. Yum. That looks like a farming meal. It's an off-grid meal. This'll, this'll get you through the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a diner. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's good. What would we call our diner? Backwoods Mangrove Diner. Nice. Where everyone knows your name. Because <laughs> there's only two of you. there's only two of us. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, what's the plan? We are going to go spear fishing. Yeah. We're getting water from rain, and so now, if we can just keep up our food supply, then we'll probably live here forever. <laughs> to get some dinner. Ready, let's do it. but nothing big enough to eat. <laughs> so we heard that there's a little creek around the corner here, so let's see what we find. Look like a couple of goobers. Looking good. Get out of there. Cool. Well, it feels so good to just move around. <laughs> Want to jog? I kind of do. Jog it out. Woo! I can run. Woo! I can run again. Try it, man. You got to leave. I feel like the astronaut. Yeah, I know. After coming back from like a couple months in space. I know. I haven't moved around much. I know, it's weird. <laughs> Bed, what's for dinner? Well, we didn't catch anything ourselves today, um, but the other day our friend uh, Sean gave us some kingfish, so I'm gonna go ahead and cook that up and pretend like we caught it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Kingfish Jamaican stew. Jamaican me hungry. Jamaican me happy. Mmm. <laughs> It's really tender, actually. Really tasty. Good. I'm a fan. I feel like today, I finally kind of got back into the feeling of cruising, you know? Mm -hmm. By going away from civilization, by getting out into nature, everything feels new and exciting and fun and adventurous, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that 
I'm starting to realize is actually our goal and I successfully got there today. Well, it is a gorgeous day today, but we are running a little bit low on provisions. So normally when we're kind of uh, sailing off grid, we just kind of switch over to our canned goods and our dry goods and kind of wean off all of our fresh vegetables, um, kind of switch to potatoes and carrots and whatever's not gone bad. <laughs> but we lucked out because there's actually a little market at the Red Frog Marina. So we're gonna hop in the dinghy and go for a little dinghy adventure. The market is about seven miles away and that's a lot longer than we usually go on little shit, especially for groceries. But it's a beautiful day today and it's in protected water. So we figured we'd kind of use it as an excuse to explore a little bit and uh, stock up on some fresh provisions. You'll be okay, just barely. And here we are, Red Frog Marina. Land pose. All right, good job there, Captain. Oh, thank you. That dinghy ride was beautiful, but I'm like so tired, it's so hot. My hand's numb from just <laughs> Other good news is they've lifted the ban on alcohol. Ecstatic. They have local IPAs made here in Panama. Oh, yes. All right, bud. Are we gonna be able to get on a plane with all this stuff? We'll find out. We, we went a little, a little we went crazy. a little wild. Oh, yeah, this one's, oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. Got quite a bit of wine and beer. It is gonna be a long ride home if we can't get on the <laughs> I know. Oh God, all right. At least we got a lot of food we can nibble on if, we, if it takes a couple of hours. Yeah, if it takes three hours, we've got plenty of beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. It want, it's thinking about it. <laughs> Almost there, come on. I think we're gonna do it, bud. Yeah, me too. It's big, it's, we're still not even on a full plane. Yeah, that's it. We yeah. did it. Oh, that's a huge relief. <laughs> we wouldn't have been back until it was dark out, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited about this beer. <laughs> this is my first IPA in, I don't know, Long two time. months, <laughs> something like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. 
Can I have a sip of that? Sure. What do you think? It's good. Can I finish it? No. <laughs> Put the beer down. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hanging out in this spot for about a week. Our goal really right now is to just kind of try to explore this archipelago as much as we can. And so we're gonna head off to a new anchorage today. It's a little bit closer to shallower reef. Um, so we're hoping we'll get some good spearfishing. And yeah, we'll just be able to check off another area in this really cool part of Bocas del Toro. It's gonna be an interesting trip over there. You know, there's, um, there's a lot of shoals here. Mm -hmm. Shoals that are, you know, sometimes inches deep, sometimes a couple feet deep. Sometimes the shoals are 20 feet deep. Those sorts of challenges are what makes this fun, so I am looking forward to it. This is the one downside of anchoring in kind of deepish water. <laughs> what was this, 40 feet? Uh-huh. We've just got a lot of chain out. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. It looks a little muddy, but not too bad. Yeah, go ahead and get the bucket. Okay. Magic bucket. This is why I wore a dark colored shirt. I gotta change my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're underway, bud. Yeah. You feeling hot? Really hot. Yeah. <laughs> So a big part of, you know, how we're able to somewhat safely navigate through waters like this that are just kind of strewn with dangers, I'm up on the bow doing what we call eyeball navigation, keeping a lookout to see if the water's getting shallower, if it looks like it's worse to the left or to the right. On top of that, you know, we really try to use as many different resources as possible to get information about the waters where we're going to be traveling. We use Navionics a lot, and something that's cool about Navionics is they've got sonar charts. The sonar charts are mostly user-created data. Sometimes the sonar charts will really give you a whole lot of information where the normal Navionics charts have almost zero information on an area. This little pass that we're taking here, we were able to first find using the Navionics sonar our charts. Okay, depth is decreasing quickly. 20, 17, 15. Yeah, go to starboard. Yeah, so here it's definitely getting shallow. Still 15, 17. Cool. Yeah. What back is it now? Up, back up to 25, 30, okay. 39. Cool. You can see on a day like today, you know, when it's overcast, it can be kind of hard to eyeball navigate just because the whites of the uh, clouds are reflecting off of the water. And so you're not really able to see the bottom very well. Okay, bud. So up ahead is probably going to be the trickiest part of this whole thing. So just be a little bit prepared to do anything, you know? Okay. Be, be ready to go reverse or turn hard. Okay. Okay, so we're getting Depth this in. What? Depth is eight. Okay. Neutral? Neutral. What's the depth? Depth is seven. Okay. A little to starboard? Go to starboard. I think we're good. You can uh, get up to speed again. So that went well. For this next reef pass that we're going to be making our way through, looking at Navionics, it looks as if there is reef right in the middle of the pass. On the satellite imagery in our cruising guide, that reef pass is totally open. This is an instance where Navionics has slightly off information and our cruising guide is kind of the, the thing to use.
So mostly for navigating, uh, we use our Android devices. The internal GPS on these things are often not very accurate. And so we now use this Bad Elf Puck. It gets really accurate GPS information and then you can have multiple devices connected to it with Bluetooth. That way Desiree can be back here looking at the tablet and I can be up on the bow with my phone and we're both looking at exactly the same stuff. But as we approach the shallow area on the chart, uh, let's slow down to minimum speed and just be prepared to hard reverse or something. So from up here, it looks clear to me. I can see some shoals way off to the port and starboard, but dead ahead, I mean, I, I see nothing but dark water. So we are right now, right on top of that green patch. Some dolphins up here. You guys leading us in through this pass? Like, come over here, this way. What's up guys? Yeah! Okay, I think we officially made it through the pass. So there's the shallows on our port side and the shallows to starboard. All right, bud, so we're gonna basically just go right in between these mangrove islands up here and just split the difference, just stay right in the middle. What's the depth? Depth is 22. So I think this is the spot. All right, you want to dive on it? Time to dive on the anchor. I want to eat those fish. <laughs> I was upset. I was like, bud, we should go back and get the gun. She's like, no, let's just snorkel. This is fun. Let's just enjoy this. I was like, the rest of the snorkel, I was like, kill. Kill the fish. Kill. Kill that one. Kill that one. Say get that one. No, yeah. I want to murder them. Yeah. I want to murder those fish, buddy. And then eat them. Yeah, yes. Okay. And then eat them also. <laughs> I have cankles. <laughs>